I'm with John Ferriola. He's the CEO of Nucor, the largest steelmaker in the U.S. John, uh, you're in high demand. Everybody always wanted to ask you guys questions after the tariffs have been implemented by Donald Trump. Let's look at yesterday. It was a bloodbath in the markets. Steelmakers even got hurt uh, pretty badly because people were worried a trade war would lead to a recession. Are you concerned about that? No, I'm not. When you look at the impact of what we're doing on steel, if you look at the total tariff, given the amount of imports that you have, Steel represents an extremely small portion of the total uh, GDP of the United States. So I don't see it in any way, either on a global basis or on a domestic basis, the tariffs uh, precipitating a great recession. And if you look at the markets today, I think they're recovering pretty well after yesterday. So short-term issue. So th this isn't something that maybe you're keeping on the radar just in case, that, you know, steel obviously is a proxy for the larger trade discussion that really could you know, go throughout the system and, and cause real trouble. Or it could cause real improvement, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you take a look at where we stand as a country on our trade deficits today. Last year, over $550 billion of a trade deficit for the United States. That's an issue that needs to be addressed. My hope is that the tariffs actually lead to a better long-term discussion and resolution of some of the trade imbalances that exist on a global basis today, and we come up with a more equitable trade relationship with partners like China and the EU. Now, in your first quarter earnings, you talked about uh, customer demand looking good and uh, continue to talk about it even after the tariffs have been implemented. But are you hearing some concerns that maybe eventually these tariffs do start to catch up to your end users and ultimately kind of curbs that growth that they were expecting longer term? Well, what we've seen is the growth really starting last year before the 232 really had an impact. What we see is the improvement in manufacturing demand that has been stimulated by tax reform and by deregulation. Certainly, tariffs, I look at it as icing on a cake that was built or made from tax reform and deregulation. That's been the real issue that has spurred manufacturing resurgence and created the demand that we're seeing in the marketplace before 232 even began to take effect this year. Now, I know we're jumping around, but Harley-Davidson yesterday, uh, obviously, the, the motorcycle company announced that they were going to be moving a bit of their production away from the U.S. offshore. Are you concerned that more end users like them will start doing this because of the tariffs? Well, I always suggest I don't want to tell people how to run their businesses, but I would suggest in general that people should always look for the long term when they make these strategic decisions. And as I said earlier, I believe that at the end of the day, these tariffs will stimulate a better discussion of true trade balance on a global basis. And when that happens, tariffs, uh, quotas will not be necessary because there will be a more balanced, fair trade relationship with our trading partners. When that happens, countries that might make a rash decision today in moving overseas might regret it when you think about the advantages of producing in the United States. You know, the relatively inexpensive and certainly available the workforce that we have here, the uh, access you know, to investment that, that we have in the United States. The United States is a good place to manufacture products. So my only guidance to all companies would be think what you're doing for the long term before you make those decisions. Producer prices, we're seeing an uptick. There's some concern that maybe we're seeing a bit of inflation come into the market. Obviously, inflation concern is always a big deal to the market. Is this something that you guys have heard much about or are worried or concerned about? When I look at pricing, particularly in our business, at the end of the day, it's a economics 101, right? Supply and demand. So we have seen an increase in demand that, as I mentioned, really started towards the middle of 2017, picked up a lot at the end of 2017 once tax reform became a certainty. So I think that's created a lot of the price increases that we're seeing today in the marketplace. At the end of the day, if pricing in the United States gets too high, what you'll see is imports coming in accepting the 25% tariff, and the market will adjust all the pricing. So at the end of the day, it's really a question of how demand holds up in the United States. Looking back at the tariffs, uh, finally we see that they're implemented against virtually everyone, including key ally, trade allies, including the EU and Canada. Looking back on it, do you think that Trump's tariffs should have been solely targeted towards China? No, I don't. When you look at the total deficit last year, the trade deficit, it being over $550 billion. In China, I don't have the exact numbers, but it was something like $370 billion. So that still allows for about $200 billion of trade imbalance. At the end of the day, true trading partners have a balanced relationship. You know, I'm not saying you know, some years country A does a little bit better than country B, but we have the last time we've had a trade surplus in the United States, Joe, was 1975. That tells me that there's something wrong 
in the way that we've been tri- negotiating trade deals. But you mentioned uh, j- just a, a moment ago inside your keynote address that you are actually positive on, on NAFTA negotiations, and you pointed out that the trade relationship has been good for steel. So how do you, how do you square that away with tariffs against Canada? Well, you mentioned, you mentioned EU and you mentioned China in the earlier question, so that was really what I was targeting, mm. my response to. When I look at NAFTA, as I mentioned in the comments, I do think NAFTA needs to be modernized, updated for a different global economy. But I'm optimistic that something is worked out with NAFTA because I do believe that NAFTA has been good for the steel industry and for manufacturing in all three countries. So I'm, I'm a fan of NAFTA if it's adjusted to be more pertinent to today's global economy. They're not major changes, but there are some changes. Country of origin, the way that Mexico and Canada and NAFTA in general deals with state-owned entities. Those are some improvements that I think that could make a stronger NAFTA that would result in benefits for all three countries. And real quick before you go, Nucor itself, where are you seeing strongest demand in your products right now? Clearly our strongest demand is in flat roll, particularly hot roll, some cold roll, but I'd also mention plate. Plate has been very strong for us this year also. 